Detroit Den 313. We're back, Stephen. Will talking that Detroit Lions football before we get going. You know how to do this thing. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell icon so you don't miss any of our new content. Steve, today, what are we giving the people? Jack Campbell, Captain Jack, defense. Jack. We're talking Super Bowls. We're talking gold jackets, anything in between with Jack Campbell. Um, yeah. How do you feel about Jack going into year two? Well, what, what's the expectations? Uh, I feel like Jack's a sleeper, man. And I'm not going to speak for you, but I, I'll speak for myself and I'll, I'll, I'll let you decide whether you're in the mix. Cause I kind of feel like you are. Um, we come on here and we talk a lot about our guys, man. And we talk about guys we're excited for. We talk about guys who we feel like could be wearing gold jackets at the end of their careers. We talk about guys that we feel like are going to be on pro bowls and all pro and so on and so forth. And a lot of times we don't mention Jack Campbell. I would say almost most of the time Jack Campbell isn't mentioned in those conversations. Now, we don't throw any shade at him or say anything negative. He's just kind of caught in between in that limbo area. So for me, I think my expectation is Jack to play well enough to get into those conversations. Uh, PFF put out their top 25 players under 25. He wasn't on that list. We had an absolute fit here at Detroit Den 313 about BB not being on there. Brian Branch, who my dog is named after, by the way. I'm just saying. That's unbelievable. Is that really what you named him after? <laughs> Listen. Because I know that's his name, but I never put two and two together. <laughs> yeah, hey, but anyways. <laughs> uh, anywho, um, love you, BB. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get him a collar with the number 32 on it. He's going to have hey, some drip. <laughs> hey, let's go. Let's go. Love it. Love to have it. So, but. That said, man, uh, we didn't throw a fit about Jack Campbell being not being on there. And I don't think uh, speaking for either either one of us, man, that it was because he can't be on there. It's because we haven't seen him play at a level to where the argument was for him to be on that list yet. So my expectation is him to step on the stage as a marquee linebacker in this league. I know last season he did some work with Luke Keekley. Um, I don't know that. His game will ever be like Luke Keekley's, which is Hall of Fame special, one you know, yeah, one of the best ever. But if he can just get, man, just a little bit of that understanding and dissecting plays immediately, um, doing more than participating in the run game. He had a horrible PFF grade in coverage. So um, which in his defense, back half of the season got way better. So I need to see more of what I saw out of Jack Campbell in the back half of the season, more than just a stack linebacker, more than a run defender coming downhill, filling gaps and making tackles. Um, a guy that can participate in a, in pass coverage, a guy that can make an impact on a game. Like that's what I'm looking for in year two. How about you, Steve? How you feel about him? William, I want Jack Campbell to just be the monster that I know he's capable of being. When he was at Iowa, butt kiss award winner, the best linebacker in college football, and there's a curve. I'm not trying to you know, be critical. I, I think Jack Campbell will get there. It's just a matter of when. Is it going to be year two? I think this year we're really going to see what type of uh, linebacker we have in Jack Campbell because mm -hmm. I think he can do a lot of different things. Like I remember in week one, he broke up a pass against Patrick Mahomes to force a fourth down. Like he's made plays. Uh, I also remember on Monday Night Football against the Raiders, he sacked Jimmy Garoppolo, blitzed up the middle, looked like an absolute – missile coming up the middle tackle was a little low it was a flag not saying it wasn't it 100 was but the blitz was phenomenal it, it was, was a it was a great move he just went way too low yeah. um it's there i need to see more of it we've talked about him playing on the edge we've talked yeah. about him playing sam linebacker a little bit you know is he great in coverage is he a great blitzer can he do a little bit of everything i think he can i don't think he's a liability now, when we put James Houston out there, he's not a great cover. When you put him with James Houston's out there, you know, hey, he's coming. I, it's something I can shift my offensive line as a quarterback. I can pick him up. Um, I can make adjustments. But when when Jack's out there, you don't know. Is he blitzing? Is he covering? I, it, there, this guy could do so many different things. Um, we just haven't seen it all yet. And I think part of that is because we have some pr pretty good linebackers. Alex Anzalone, captain of the defense, fan favorite, love him. Yeah. Um, it's it's hard for Jack to get on the field and stay on the field because of Alex Anzalone. And that's just product of good competition. You know, iron sharpening iron. It's, hey, you want a spot on the field, you got to earn it. It's not just handed out. Like, I, I think we'll get a good look at Jack this year, though. Yeah, I think Jack forced uh, Derek Barnes to step up, too. Derek Barnes had a had a pretty darn good season. And, and just being honest and transparent, he had a way better season than I thought he would last season. Uh, to me, Derek Barnes is a guy that uh, rushes off the edge 
last season better than Jack Campbell did. But I think that Jack Campbell has more of the tools that um, or more of the tools than Jack Campbell does. Um, or Jack Campbell has more tools than Derek Barnes does as far as he should be able to rush the edge better than Derek Barnes. But as it stood last season, Derek Barnes did a better job. So I'm looking to see uh, where we even play Jack Campbell. I think that he is a monster at Mike Linebacker. I think he's a monster, and I think his potential is unbelievable at that spot. But what are we going to do with Derek Barnes? What are we going to do with the rest of that group? Are we going to move him around? Um, James Houston will be another one, as you mentioned. What will that look like? But wherever we play Jack Campbell, I need to see more impact. I need to see more of what I saw in the second half of the season. Uh, but I'm not upset or worried at all. Um, from what I saw, uh, watching plays develop in the NFL as a rookie first year, it's tough. So, but he talks about that thing uh, from Iowa, mutt mentality, right? That Iowa had a lot of guys that were – passed on by the bigger schools, the Alabamas, the Georgias, the Michigans. Uh, they were passed on by those schools, man. And, they, you know, it's kind of that the puppy that nobody wanted is what they, those guys kind of took on uh, the mindset of out there in Iowa, man. So uh, let's get it done this year, Jack. I know you want to do it. I know you're committed. Um, he said himself he's a football guy. It's pretty much all he does. Um, I saw some of his offseason workouts on YouTube. It looks like he was working out like – and at a farm in somebody's garage, like in the middle of nowhere. Doing that Brock Lesnar workout. <laughs> yeah, man. So I'm like, man, uh, I can see that he's pretty dialed in. And he's a guy that he doesn't need to be social, man. He's not a guy that you're going to see um, being super flashy or doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Um, he's just a guy that gets gets to his business, man. He's always been a captain at, from the high school and college level. Him and Sam LaPorta were captains out there in Iowa. So just continue to do what needs to be done, man, and go ahead and take take that step forward this season. Now, Steve, if Jack Campbell does take a step forward, do you think that this Detroit Lions defense can be a top 10 defense? I don't think that relies on Jack Campbell. I think that relies on our pass rush and our secondary, and Jack Campbell's literally right. stuck right in the middle of that. Um, I don't need to see Jack Campbell be a pro bowler this year. I just need to, I don't really need to see much. Just keep growing. Just keep oh. doing your thing. Like I'm not worried about them. Um, I think our defense being in the top 10, is that what you said? Top 10 or top 15? Top 10. Top 10. I think that really just relies on pass rush secondary. We have a lot of new names. DJ Reader's going to help. DJ Reader's even going to help um, Jack Campbell as well. Like he's going to be taking on two guys. You want to blitz Jack Campbell up the middle. Like we were talking about with Jimmy Garoppolo. I hope you have a mobile quarterback because he's going to be there in about two seconds and you don't have all day to sit there and he's going to be closing on you fast. And he's a big kid, but like six, four two two fifty, two forty, something like that. Like that's a big man moving very fast in a mm -hmm. wide open hole because two of your offensive linemen are trying to deal with DJ reader and his 330 pounds. So yeah. <laughs> he poses some good problems. Yeah, he does, man. I, I'm just looking at, at it at levels, man. So when I think about our secondary level, I have zero worries. I went from a whole lot of worries zero to, to I got zero worries about our zero. Secondary. You're locked man. in. I just think about man. We just have so many Carlton Davis, Amik, uh, Kirby Joseph, uh, Ify Melifonwu, Brian Branch, like uh, Kendall Vildor. Uh, easy, take it easy. Emmanuel <laughs> Mosley. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I would talk about Stephen Gilmore before I talk about <laughs> Vildor, but um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, even Kendall Vildor. I'm talking practice. about Happy Gilmore. <laughs> <laughs> but Kendall Vildor, man, uh, they talk about him at practice, man, giving us a look and being a tremendous comp competitor, man. So just the whole group from that secondary, I'm not worried at all. Then I go into our D-line, man, and you start talking about uh, I think that Broderick Martin is going to take a step forward. He looks great. And I just have faith in Coach Williams uh, from your Tennessee Titans. Shout out to him, man. Um, Dan Campbell has already said he feels like he's the best at the D-line coach in the NFL. Um, him, Aleem. Um, Obviously, Aiden Hutchinson, Marcus Davenport, if he can stay healthy, James Houston. I just have faith in that group. So then it leads me to I know what I'm going to get out of Alex Anzalone, and I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of Derek Barnes and Jack Campbell. So if I have questions, that's where my questions are. Now, they're not huge questions. Like, I think those guys are going to be terrible or anything like that. But are we going to be looking at guys that are serviceable? Or are we going to be looking at impact players? If Jack Campbell can bring an impact player to that level, I think that is what we say here all the time. It's going to be thoughts and prayers. So that's why I was asking if Jack Campbell can be an impact player, will it make us top 10? Cause I feel like 
if Jack Campbell can be just a couple ounces of what Luke Kinkley was, uh, it is really going to be thoughts and prayers because what DJ Reader is going to add to that group with Hutch, Aline, a little sprinkle of Broderick Martin, Marcus Davenport, if he stays healthy, the 87 players that we have in our secondary. I don't even think I mentioned Ennis Rakestraw. Nope. So, yeah, man. So it's uh, we just have guys for days where we have depth for days. And if we have impact players at all three levels or multiple impact players, I think that's how you get into a space to where you're talked about in that top 10, top five. Maybe they're handing Aaron Glenn a uh, defensive coach of the year trophy. I don't know. I don't know. Can he be a guy that will, goes from in the hot seat to uh defensive coach of the year? I think it's possible. I don't want to talk too much about Aaron Glenn because I have a little something planned for him later on. So right. I don't want to spill the beans too early. You know what I'm saying? But I get it. I don't know. I just don't think Jack Campbell himself as one single person can elevate the defense at the top 10. I think he could be a huge contributor, yeah. but um, I think there's other more valuable positions uh, like the secondary and the defensive line, mainly that opposite defensive end of Aiden Hutchinson. That's going to, that's going to be the reason we go into a top 10. And I've said all along, you get this defense on track with the offense and both of them are in the top 10. You're a tough team to beat because you know, we're going to be good special teams wise. Mm -hmm. Maybe we have a couple questions about our kicking game. Maybe we sign Jake Bates here in a couple weeks and that gets shirt up. Maybe he doesn't leave the state of Michigan. We got some guys on special teams who can make some plays. Vaki, uh, Germ, uh, Khalif Raymond. Like, we got some guys on special teams, too. We're going to be very tough to beat in all three aspects of football. It's going to be tough. If Malcolm these, Rodriguez. Malcolm Rodriguez, like fullback. What's he going to do? He, he yeah. run through a wall? I don't know. He's going to do a lot of different things, too. But Jack Campbell, just as Jack Campbell, I don't think puts the defense into top 10. But he could be a nice, a very, very nice little piece. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you 100%, man. So, guys, you got anything else, Will? Nope, that's it. All right, leave some comments down below. Let us know how you feel about Jack Campbell. Does he project the defense into that top 10 category? Leave it in the comments. Hit that like button. Stick around. Subscribe. We'll be back later with another show. Peace. Peace.